Yeah, you made it right here on the boat, didn't you? Awesome. What kind of owl is it? Alien. Alien owl. Yeah, we made a bit of a mess here. Previously on Sailing Bella Chandra, I tested my seacocks and I replaced some old boat plumbing. Hey guys, so we had a day here where the power went out and I had to run my engine. So I opened the seacock to my sea strainer to let the water through into the engine. I noticed after maybe 20 minutes of running the engine that there was water leaking out of my Perco sea strainer. Not a lot of water, but it was like a trickle coming out from where the seal is on it. I picked up a new pack of Perco sea strainer seals and I was lucky that my local boat store had the exact seals I'm looking for so that's pretty awesome. Now what I'm going to do is try to remove the strainer, clean it up, put the new seals on, put it back in place and see if uh, it continues to leak. It probably won't. Working around a seacock, I hate to do this kind of stuff while I'm in the water but uh, the seacock works really good so I'm not too concerned. Let's see how that goes. It's the Perco brand strainer. I have to remove this hose and this hose. This is where I remove the filter and uh, would remove any water once the seacock is closed, which it is already. And uh, this is like a mounting plate, so to remove the strainer, I have to unbolt it from this mounting plate. If you look down here, there's my seacock. It's in the closed position. Some standing water in there I'm not too happy about, so I'm going to be uh, getting rid of that first. I've shoved a towel underneath the strainer so that it'll collect some of the water that's going to come out when I open it. i got a bucket ready to go. I'm doing these, these wing nuts here, which will cause some water to come out. Here we go. There's going to be a lot of water coming out because uh, the engine has a bunch of water in it already from the last time. Well, I guess it's not all coming out. Um, backing up from the system so it would basically drain out what's in the engine down to the seacock. Uh, which I'm expecting to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. It's got this little turkey baster, which is really great for sucking water out of stuff. And out comes the filter. There it is, a little bit of rust on it there. I didn't expect that. There's not much in there. I mean, it's not very dirty. I'm going to start by removing these hose clamps. And then after I've got it removed, I'll take the strainer right out. Hey guys, so back in my parents' house in New Brunswick, I brought the sea strainer with me. We're going to clean it up. We're going to take it apart, change the seals, put it back together, make sure it's looking nice, and uh, take it back to the boat, reinstall it, and make sure it's watertight. So here we go. So what we've got here is a Perco sea strainer. They're widely used in boating. And uh, if you were to buy a new one from Perco today, it would look just like this, just, just cleaner. All right, so the strainer is disassembled and all the old seals have been removed from all of the components of the strainer. It's time to remove all this green tarnish if I can and get it shiny again. I'm going to try to anyway. Um, I read on the internet if you take vinegar and then you dissolve salt in the vinegar and then add flour, it makes it like a paste. The vinegar, because it's an acid, will break down uh, some of the corrosion. So I'm going to give that a try. If it works, it's going to save me a lot of elbow grease with a wire brush and some steel wool. So let's give that a try and see if it works. And if it doesn't, well, back to the old elbow grease, I guess. So here we go.
Okay, so after two baths in the vinegar solution that I made, um, I was able to remove a good portion of the green corrosion that's on these things, except for this bottom <laughs> of the filter. It seemed to be really tough to get that off, but you know, it's only just a surface corrosion. Um, and I could put it back together as is and it'd be fine. Uh, everything else seems good. I mean, like the top, uh, there's a bit of green left, but I mean, you can still see like the bronze or brass is coming through pretty nice there. And the cap is looking really like, really good. So I'm okay with leaving some of this green tarnish, but I did my best and I cleaned it up good. The most important thing you want to do is clean up where the seals go. That's very important. Um, I mean, I'm changing my seals. I'm putting brand new seals on and I want to make sure that there's no old cork left in these ring spots here where they're going to go. There's the new seals. They're cork. The old ones were cork. And yeah, you want these to be like very clean, shiny, like get right down to the metal and uh, have that ready to go so that when you put the new seals in, they'll make a good seal. It's really important. So you got this spot on the lid here. There's one and um, you want to clean this because this is where the lid's going to sit and then under here this also has to be nice and clean and shiny so that's your priority make sure that is good and then um, you know the strainer won't leak so yeah it's time to put this back together and see how it goes So I'm back on the boat and I've got my sea strainer back from my parents house in New Brunswick where I took it apart and changed the seals and cleaned up all the metal to some degree and uh, reassembled it. Time to get it installed and give it a try and make sure it's not leaking. So here we go. So before I can reinstall the sea strainer I need to address an issue here with the mounting piece installed to hold the sea strainer at some point made out of aluminum. And you know how it is when you have two dissimilar metals in a marine environment. One will typically eat the other. So this is an aluminum plate here. This plate that sits on the bottom here and holds it to the engine mount is actually starting to pit and looking corroded. But I mean, the worst is this giant hole right here. The sea strainer has three bolts. It sits here, here, and here. And this was just a hole with <laughs> a bolt like these other two but it's, it's corroded so heavily, literally eaten a hole right through. Like, I mean, it kind of looks like on Alien when the acid hits the metal and eats a hole. So what I'm going to do is come up with some way to separate the brass or bronze that the strainer is with some kind of a small rubber gasket here between the two to keep the metals from touching. Where I've got a hole right here, I basically I'll just mount like a backing plate on the back of this uh, with a couple of bolts and the strainer can then have something to bolt to. So I bolted on a piece of aluminum to the back of this plate where that hole is and I drilled a new hole where this strainer can be bolted onto, bolted right on there. And uh, yeah, hopefully that'll work. Okay, so we are looking at a fully reinstalled Perco C strainer. I was able to get it bolted back in. If you check this out, I've got some rubber material here in between C strainer and this aluminum plate so that the dissimilar metals aren't making contact. So I'm ready to open up the seacock and let some raw water flow into this baby and we'll see if there's any leaks. 
if the seals are holding up. If there is a bit of a leak, it's probably because I may not have tightened these four bolts that hold the C-strainer together tight enough. And if that's the case, I am ready to go with a ratchet and I can tighten them on the fly. Okay, so let's open the valve and uh, let the water flow. Okay, so I can hear the water entering the strainer. You can see here that the water is not really filling up the reservoir here. Um, or if it is, it's happening very slowly. Try to loosen the top to let some of the air out and let the water pressure take over. I'll just loosen the top off a bit. Well, that did it. As soon as I just loosened those a little bit, I could hear the air escape quickly and then wham, it filled right up to the top. So, and of course I tightened the nuts before it could really like start to spill or anything. And then I let it sit here for a little while full of water, just watching for leaks, making sure that I don't have drips coming out somewhere. And I did notice within a couple of minutes that right here, a little bit of water just started to show up in this little seam down here. It tells me that I don't have the strainer tight enough. And I just went around to all four of these bolts around the sides here and gave them a couple turns uh, just to tighten it a bit more. Before you tighten these bolts make sure that you loosen the bolts that are holding it to like in my case this solid metal plate because I have them pretty tight and if I'm trying to tighten these bolts which brings the top piece of the clamshell on the bottom closer together if these bolts are tight you're gonna create some kind of a pressure right here and it could warp. Now I'm just waiting again to see if this water builds up anymore. When I see it starting to leak out again I'll give it another turn. Um, you know and just keep doing that until you've, you're sure that the thing is sealed up. Next time on Sailing Bella Chandra I rebuild my chain locker door and I rebed my windless foot switches.